and here it is. The first thing I'm going to do is to hide the sidebar using the hidden class. This will set the display property to none. Then I decide when the sidebar should become visible and usually I pick the MD variant and set display to block. So now when the screen is small, the sidebar is hidden, but as it gets bigger, the sidebar appears. Now, whenever I need to make a slide over, either from the sidebar or a top navigation, I pretty much always keep the mobile version separate from the desktop one. You might be able to do both versions using the same template code by playing with different table invariants, but it's just too much work, and even if you manage to pull it off, the end result is quite fragile. You're always worried things might break when you make changes. So it's best to keep the desktop and mobile versions separate. So this will be our mobile sidebar and this will be our desktop sidebar. The next step is to design the open state of the slide over. We'll need the sidebar, an element to act as an overlay and the container to hold them both. The slide over container will be class fixed inset 0 Z40. This will make sure the container takes all the available space and that it's always stacked over everything else in the page. Let's also add a BG red 300 to make that visible. For the overlay, we'll do fixed inset 0 BG gray 600. And to make this background transparent, we can do BG opacity 50. And now we can remove the BG red 300 class. Now, if the desktop sidebar had to start as a hidden element on small screens and then as a block element on larger screens, the mobile version has to do the reverse thing. We'll start as a visible element and then we'll hide it. We need to bring the sidebar in front of the overlay, so we'll add relative and then Z10 and H full to make it occupy the full height of the screen. Let's also make it a bit wider. As you can see, the logo got a bit bigger and I'd like to have it the same everywhere, so I'll give it a fixed width. Let me find it, here it is, and instead of width full, we'll have width 48. One problem we need to tackle is making the sidebar scrollable. If I open the dev tools and reduce the height of the viewport, I can't reach the last items of the sidebar. We need to turn this into a scrollable element. To do that, we'll grab everything inside the sidebar, except the logo and put them inside a container. Now this container will scroll vertically, so we'll do overflow y auto, but at the same time we need to turn its parent into a vertical flex. So we'll go here and say flex, flex call, and then make this element fill all the available space using flex one. And there it is. We can now continue by adding the button that will close the slide over. We can go here at the top and say button, type button, value close sidebar, and then use a hero icon like X icon, let's say class H5 with 5. Let's import the icon. And here it is. Let's continue styling the button. We'll do class, absolute, top, to, right, to. This will move the button to the top right corner. And then to align the icon inside of it, we can do flex, item, center, justify center. Let's say with 10, h10, rounded, full. And for the focus styles, we'll do focus, Outline none, focus ring two, and focus ring gray 600. And here it is. Let's add some space between the logo and the X button by increasing the padding. So we'll do PT8 and then PB4. That looks better. We are pretty much done with the visual part of things. It's time to deal with the functional side. For that, we'll be using headless UI and specifically the following components. Transition root, 
Transition Child, Dialog, and Dialog Overlay. Let's register the components and start using them. The first thing I'm going to do is to replace the div that acts as our slide over container with the dialog component. So here we'll have dialog and then tell it to render as a div, pass it the open prop, which will be sidebar opened, and then on close, we'll set sidebar opened to false. Let's register this. We'll go to our data and say sidebar open and the default will be true. Now we can find our close button. Come on, where you are, here it is. And on click, we'll say sidebar open equal false. And now if we click the X button, the sidebar is closed. It also works if we press the escape key. But when I click on the overlay, the sidebar doesn't close. And that's because we are still using the div element. We need to replace this with the dialog overlay. And now if I click on the gray background, the sidebar closes. We have a bunch of ways to close the sidebar, but there's no button to open it. So let's add a button next to the search form. I'll scroll down to find the top bar. And here it is. Let's add button. Type button. Value open sidebar. And then here we'll have a menu icon h5 with 5 and of course let's import it from hero icons and register it save and here it is let's style the button a bit we'll do flex item center justify center to align the icon then with 10 h 10 rounded full text gray 600 and let's say hover ring 2 hover ring gray 300 focus outline none focus ring 2 focus ring gray 600 and of course on click this will set sidebar open to true let's change the default to false and maybe increase the size of the icon to 6. And this is shrinking, so we'll do flex shrink 0. Now I want the search form and the menu button to be left aligned, so I'll wrap them inside the div. I'll do div and then flex items center and flex one to push the other menu to the end. So now if I increase the size, there we go. But we need some spacing right here, so I'll do MR free. And then hide the button on larger screen, so MD hidden. And now if I reduce the size, it appears. Let's also reduce the padding right here on smaller screens. So I'll go up where here. So we have PX, this will be MD, and then PX3, and here we'll have MD, and then space X3. That's better. Now that everything is functional, our final step is to add in the transitions. We'll wrap the dialog with the transition root component. And then we'll set show to sidebar opened. And we can remove this one right here because the transition root will take care of it. And then inside this, we can have many transition child components. And we'll need one for the sidebar and one for the overlay. Now both transition child components will be rendered as a template. And the first one will have enter transition is in out duration 200 
and transform. Now for the enter from phase, we'll have minus translate x full. So we'll start from the outside of the screen on the left side. Then the end state, so enter 2, will be translate x0. Then for the leave phases, we need to do basically the same thing, but in reverse. We'll have leave, leave from will be translate x0, and leave 2 will be minus translate x full. And here it is. Now let's add some transitions for the overlay as well. We'll have enter, which will be transition opacity is linear duration 200. Then enter from will be opacity 0, enter 2 will be opacity 100. For the leave phase, we need to do the exact same thing but in reverse. So we'll have opacity 100 and we'll end up with opacity 0. And here it is. Now this is still visible because I forgot to add an MD variant to the dialog. So here we should have MD hidden to hide it. And there it is. And that's it. That's how you can turn your sidebar into a slide over for smaller screens. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that stuff. Bye.